All right. Uh, uh, excited to be here for game week. Excited to see the students start classes on campus. Uh, before I get started, I want to wish all the local high schools all throughout the state uh, good luck as they enter their seasons. Um, we're obviously excited about the, the opportunity. We've, we've worked very hard. Excited to play a home game. Excited to play UTEP. Uh, Coach uh, Walden is a winner. I've known him since all the way, all the way back at East Texas Baptist. And uh, he'll bring elite energy. He'll bring, bring a dynamic offense and an aggressive defense. They've got excellent players. Um, and so it's going to be quite a challenge. So we're excited about it, excited about our team. And uh, look forward to seeing everyone there uh, starting, starting with the legacy walk and all the way through the end of the game. We hope it's a great day because we've worked very hard to get to this day. So with that, I'll take your questions. Even. I think we're going to play them all. Yeah, we're going to play them all. So, um, you know, we uh, kind of have different roles for all of them. And, um, you know, Big Ten plays four weeks away. So I feel like uh, I was hoping we'd be a little bit more dialed in on where they are. But um, I feel like they've all competed enough that um, we're going to give them all a chance and uh, make some decisions probably three, or three weeks down the line. Um, might, might illuminate itself, obviously, earlier. But... Um, they're all doing really good things. And so, um, yeah, that's one, the one position we're probably not quite, you know, we're still quite unsettled on that in kicker. Jaron Bonner, his rise is obviously notable just to, to get that number one spot a year ago, what wasn't really in this position. What has he done to, to get to this spot where he's number one going into your open? I, I think anytime you have a guy that you can say um, is your starting slot receiver who was willing to be your starting fullback, um, there's something special about that type of guy, their brain. He was an excellent high school receiver, you know, had an injury. Um, as we tried to find roles for him, because we liked just the way he plays football, um, it started to emerge. And then just was unable to keep that 225, 228 weight. And so as he got, he kept staying around like 218. I, you know, we just said, hey, let's, let's put him in the slot and see how physical he can be, you know, trying to win third down with, you know, big people like that. And he's just done excellent. So, you know, we can be in 11 personnel and all of a sudden get under center and have him be the fullback still. Um, there's lots of things you can do with a guy like Janeerin. But um, at the end of the day, he's just a winner. He's tough, really tough. He's kind of, kind of um, uh, emblematic of the type of guys I love to coach. And um, again, as we talk about positionless football, I think throughout the course of the year, you'll see him do a lot of things, the versatility that he brings. How do you feel about the run game coming out of camp? Well, um, I feel good about it, but, you know, we're running against ourselves every day. So, you know, after a while, you know, you start to, uh, you know, you come out and you got the defense is yelling the play and the offense is, you know, knowing what the defense is going to do. So it'll be really interesting to see when we face somebody else, obviously, you know, handling, handling, you know, uh, handling different fronts. Now, um, Coach Clark's defense, you know, is uh, – is, uh, is very similar to ours in that it's three down, four down, three, three, five hybrid. All the same things that they do is what we do. And so you have to be able to handle their pressure packages and the way that they attack you. Um, you know, they held opponents to right around four yards to carry last year. So, um, you know, it'll be a challenge, but uh, I feel good about where we are. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put oars on the running backs if I didn't feel like we had guys who could make plays. Expectations for Dylan, and, and how, how do you communicate that he doesn't have to do too much? No, no, we're not thinking that way at all. No, no, uh, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather lose the first game than the last game. So we're not going to ease into it. We're going to play. We're going to play. Specifically, strategy, but mindset wise. Yeah, yeah, Dylan's going to play. He's going to play the place, right? He's going to when we call drop back, he's going to go back there, take his drop, go through his progression. Just how we want him to play when he's a junior. We're going to start day one that way. We're not easing into anything. Are there, is that because of like what Dylan has showed you? Would you do that with anybody? Uh, I, it's a great question. So I don't mean to demean it, I, but just this is, how I've, this is where I'm at right now. This is just where I'm at. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd be like this with anybody else. I don't know. But um, this is just where I'm at. This is how I feel. It's a good thing. Why Hill um, on that depth chart? Is he available to play? Are you expecting to let him play in his opener? Yeah, so Bly Hill um, came back from the knee and was doing really well. And then just, you know, sometimes you come back from an injury and it leads to another injury. So he's got some soreness in his hamstring. So he's available. 
Um, but I don't know how much he'll, he'll, you'll have to see how this week goes. So that was kind of an unfortunate uh, remnant of this past week, you know, just, uh, just uh, some tightness in his hamstring, nothing like nothing serious, but um, he's available, but you know, I don't know how much he actually will play. So you're looking at, you know, Sierra Wright, you know, you're looking at uh, uh, all those guys, Amari Sanders, uh, Jeremiah Charles, Larry Tarver, all those guys will be ready to go. Henry Bukowski, he missed some time in this camp. What's his status right now? Uh, he'll, he's back in the mix. Um, I think he'd be available kind of like Bly on an emergency basis, um, probably trending more towards sometime next week being truly able to go play a full game. Is there anybody else with the status of that? Um, I'm not very good at that. I'm, I don't mean that. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. Gunnar Gatula uh, is, is injured right now. So Gunnar's uh, got a hand, an ankle, excuse me, has an ankle. So he's trending towards being able to play. You know, Brody Tagaloa is, uh, so I'd say Gunnar probably next week. I'd say uh, Brody Tagaloa uh, hopefully two weeks from now. Is there anyone else that you guys have injury-wise? I know it's been like three days, but an update on Tristan. Yeah, Tristan, I mean, Tristan's kicking. You know, he's in the mix. So uh, we'll make a decision probably Thursday or Friday of who that who, who's going to kick. Malachi is, uh, is good. Yeah, Malachi's healthy. Yeah, Malachi's healthy. He's just, uh, you know, he had a... He had a groin, so he's just um, you know a little bit you know further down on the depth chart right now. You mentioned, um, you mentioned Baylor 2019 um, and how some of the things leading up to this, to this season kind of reminded you or you've chosen to do in a similar way that you handled with that team, like with the longer camp. And um, are there other similarities? And those 11 win team, I think there are there other similarities. Um, I sure hope so. <laughs> Accountability, things like that that you look for? Yeah, you know, the hard thing is that was year three. And, you know, the team in year two figured out how to win. They got to a bowl game and they won the bowl game. So, you know, that's really – we haven't made that step. We haven't gotten to a bowl game and won a bowl game. So, year three for me, you know, um, there were a lot – you know, it's funny, there were a lot of people thought I was – you know, there actually was like they were reporting on the news that I was leaving, going taking the, job, the Jets job. And I was like, I'm not leaving here. Like, I knew we were going to be good. Like, I knew. Like, those guys were – they were dialed in. So I think we have the same level from our older guys of accountability. It's just, you know, learning how to win. I mean, you know, it was a 53-yarder by a walk-on kicker to send the game into overtime against TCU. We had the ball second and 19 with a minute left on our own one-yard line, and Charlie Brewer took us 99 yards. We dropped the touchdown. So, like, we, we won four games in overtime or on the last possession. That's the, that's the secret sauce of where we have to get to with this team, right? But um, – um, so that's why I'm not easing into it. You know, I'm not going to just sit there and say, hey, Dylan, hand the ball off 42 times. Don't throw it. Oh, hey, go win the game for us. You know, I just – I'd rather coach the mistakes now and um, if there are mistakes, coach the mistakes. And then when the time comes, you know. As excited as everyone is to play, how good has this team been at trying to kind of stay in the moment and not get ahead of itself through fall camp to this point? Yeah, they've been they've, – they've been um, – you know, they, they live they, – they have their own saying. That's not mine. They say one better. And I think they've done that. You know, they try to get one better every day. I think Corey or someone did that, and they they stick to it. Um, you know, not everything's perfect. You know, but um, uh, and again, like, there's just a core group of veteran guys that just kind of they just kind of make the thing go. So, um, you know, it, when you, you, I think you're going to have what all the, everyone who starts on defense, but maybe one guy is a senior. Is that right, correct? You know, or could be a senior. You know, still, still some some COVID years out there, and some injury. But pretty much everyone's a senior, right? So when everyone asked last year, why is the defense so much further ahead of the offense? Well, a lot of guys on defense had played a ton. Well, now what you're seeing on offense is you're starting to see the guys who've weathered the storm. They're getting a little bit older now, so hopefully, um, so there, there's there's that mix. So I think they've they've done a good job. How might, how might the offense's growth open up Sats' play sheet a little bit after he was pretty limited last season? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, to me, offensive football is about getting the ball in the hands of guys who can make plays and letting them make plays. And um, really, I'll just go back to the running backs. It's really about when we block it for four, we can't just get four anymore. Like, we, we need, we need, four needs to become 12. Block it for four and it needs to go be 80, right? And so that's, that's, the, that's the step that we have to see. Um, we have big receivers, you know, so we're going to face a really aggressive defense. Um, you know, they'll play man on us, and so there's going to have to be a lot of big body catches. And instead of trying to scheme up the perfect play, like we're just going to call plays and let the fellas go win. And so when you have guys you believe in, you've you got to let them go win. And um, so, yeah, I mean, Sat's got it all at his, he got it all at his fingertips. And the offense has worked really hard since 
you know, the first week of June on these plays. Like, we're not going to go out there and reinvent the wheel. We're not tricking anybody. Like, we, we know what we're doing. We're going to go out there and do it and uh, see what happens. On, on Jamal Banks, I mean, has he just been everything you were hoping he would be as a leader and a person, given that he got a single-digit jersey and, and he's kind of one of the top receivers? You know, when, when he came in, when he came in on his visit, both he, Miss Christie, his mother, you know, a lot of times guys will sit there and they'll tell you their goals. And, you know, he was talking about, you know, nonprofit work and the things he wanted to do someday. And, you know, I hear that a lot, right? And, you know, and um, he's one of the first guys I've ever seen. Like, some guys do it. But to the level he – I mean, he's here to help affect other people. Like, there's not a day that I'm not blown away by his impact on other people. He just – with such a life of gratitude. And I mean, he is an amazing, amazing person. And um, so I think he's had an ama- a really good effect, you know, on those guys. And then his professionalism, you know, you have him and Nayor have brought a tremendous sense of professionalism to an already really good group. And so, you know, it's gonna be kind of funny out there. You're gonna have, you're gonna have Nayor, you know, playing at his third school, you know, f- fourth or fifth year senior in one play. And then you're gonna have Ja'Cory playing his first college game, probably the next rep. So it's kind of a, it's a fun time to be uh, to be at Nebraska with these guys, but Jamal's Jamal really is he. And you know what's great about Jamal's voting? The guys on defense voted for him. The O line voted for him. Um, you know he he got he, he's respected by everybody. Back to the nonprofit stuff that you talked about. What's an example? Of that? Uh, you probably should talk more to him. I mean, I, he led our team for us though. I mean, in terms of what he's doing outside, but like. For us, like he led our team in community service hours. He led our team in, um, you know, we do our off-season points. I mean, he literally shattered what anyone else had ever done. I'm talking about it, three schools. Like just the amount of stuff that he did in the off-season and he does shattered <laughs> anything anyone's ever done. And so, uh, and, and he and Elliot Brown, and Elliot was right there with him. And um, so it's just, um, I just hadn't seen somebody do that, right? Normally you come in and you're like, I'm a one-year guy. Yeah, yeah I'm a buy into the culture, but I want to, I want to put some good stuff on tape and get drafted. He came here to try to help change our culture and improve it, right? And because um, every year you change your culture and every year you redo your culture and improve it. And Jamal was like just the most amazing addition to that. And um, it's good when other transfer guys come in and maybe they're struggling with the things we ask of you and they see him buying into it and having the success he's having and say, you know what, maybe I should try this. And so the impact of Jamal Banks will, will, will be here for a while. Eight months you've kind of been able to be around Dylan. How have you seen him just navigate the attention and kind of the fishbowl that kind of comes with being him coming here? Um, you know, um, well, I think like anybody else, I mean, there's probably parts of it he likes, right? Like there's part, you know, you like you like when kids have your jersey and you like when people come up to you and you, you like all that stuff. At the same time, you know, I, I, I think he's done a good job so far of, you know, um, always, always humbly working, you know, to me. You know, like he, 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 he texted me every night last week, may I please be late to curfew? And he'd send a, he's, he's still, a, he's still in the building. Right. And so he's, you know, I come in this morning to get my little old man workout in and I go in, there's music in the cardio room. I'm like, who's in here? And he's in there riding the bike this morning at 6am. So, um, he understands that, you know, to get all that, you have to have work. And, um, um, you know, and I, I remind him like this position when you're the when you're the quarterback at the University of Nebraska, you, you better be ready to ride the highs and lows. And your life better not be about what other people think about you. You know what I mean? It better not be that. And I think, uh, you know, he and his family have, have, have instilled that in him. So, and he's a good teammate. You know, he does, does what he can with the fellows to, to, to help get them ready as well. From a style of play standpoint, what can fans expect out of your team on Saturday? I think they're going to have to come and see it, you know. I think they're going to have to come and watch. You know, I don't want to give away too much, but, I mean, we're going to kind of play the way we play. We like to we like to run it and throw it, you know, not just run it. But we still want to run the football, <laughs> you know. I mean, the, the key tenets of, of football are what they're supposed to be. But, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is we want to play complementary football, right? We want to, you know, we want to win the turnover battle. We want to be physical. We want to, we want to have a culture of execution where, you know, and my execution is not jumping up and making the one-handed catch. That's the last phase of execution. We want to align and assign properly. We want to play, you know, with great energy and dominant contact. And when the chance comes, we want to go make a play. So um, I think we have a lot of good players on our team. Uh, right now we talk about a couple of them, right, because some of them have not yet you know, established themselves out there. But um, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. And, and when, you watch, when you watch UTEP's offense, at least based upon Austin P, you know, they test every facet of your defense, right? So they're going to – they're going to play with great tempo, so you're going to have to sub a lot of guys. You know, they're going to 
attack you on the perimeter. So, you know, your cover guys have to be really physical. They're going to take shots down the field. They're going to run the quarterback. Now, uh, their, their tailback, you know, uh, I want to make sure I say his name right, J Javon Jack. I don't know if it's Jevin or Javon, but he's an excellent, excellent, excellent football player with elite contact balance, and he can make you miss. If you look at most games early in the year, the games were won or lost in, in week one uh, based upon tackling and based upon giving up big plays and missed assignments. You watched the, the games the other night, right? You watched the um, – you watch a Georgia Tech game, you know, they bad snap. Okay, they have the ball on the 39-yard line. They throw a tunnel screen out. They, they, make, they, they make that tackle, and it's a long kick. They miss that tackle. He's down a field goal range, and they win the game. So we're going to have to tackle really well. You know, they brought over a lot of talent, a lot of skill, a lot of speed. Um, so I think fa our fans will get a chance to see our defense tested in ways you don't get tested in the Big Ten. I mean, it's going to go from a bunch to five by zero to double pass, a trick play, to – to tempo to inside zone. I mean, they, it's really a great offense. You know, they averaged 34 points, I don't know, six points or something like that a, a, a game last year. And well, while they run, you know, they, they only averaged about 68 plays a game, you know, last year. There's some that they're going to go fast. So um, it'll be a challenge. It'll be a real challenge. It'll be good for our defense um, if we can handle it. It'll be good for our defense to come out there practice and every other play is a redo right now because we're just not handling um, the amount of things that you don't really see that when you go to a Big Ten game. So it's a wide open style that, you know, is fun to watch. Hopefully, it's not fun to play against. Um, Ramirez Stewart was he hurt at the start of camp or just not on the one? On I, the didn't one I didn't bring him in. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't bring him in. Uh, yeah, Derek's done a great job. You know, Derek was a guy that we kept up last year. You know, he's a legacy player. He's just a smart, heady, tough football player. He's dependable. Does things right. Um, so he, you know, he's getting an opportunity right now to play on some special teams as well. But you know, Ramir, I I I, um, I held him out from the season. Just you know, it's just as really has really been his weight. You know, being where it's supposed to be. And uh, to his credit, he handled that. And when he showed back up at camp, he showed back up, and he was in he was in uh, good shape. His weight was down, and he got an opportunity. He played he played the way we're not capable of playing. See, we believe that Ramir's a really good football player, and um, he just is going to have to he just had to cut loose a little bit. So he's in the mix. He'll play on teams, and. Uh, um, Keep his weight down about 205. When he's at 205, he's an excellent safety. How beneficial will it be that your defense is so experienced, being the up-tempo style play that you have plays? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the, the the benefit of it is uh, probably that, you know, our guys have, have, you know, a lot of those guys played Colorado last year, you know, and it was 13-7, and all of a sudden that blew up to 36-13. And you realize how if you're not – if you're playing a type of team that – is going to play with you with tempo and try to win on the perimeter and run tunnel screens. You go back to that game at Colorado, it was the tunnel screens that these guys run that uh, can really hurt you. You know, Jake, you know, well, I know Coach Walden, it's his offense. The, Jake Brown is the OC. Jake was the OC last year at La Tech. They ran two middle screens that should have been touchdowns. One, Jamari made an amazing play, and one, they kind of got in their own way, but they had us dialed up. So, um, you know, when you have older guys, you can warn them of things, and they don't take it as like, oh, Coach doesn't believe in us. Oh, Coach, don't worry. Like, you have to have humble confidence, right? Like, you prepare for everything. And so going back and watching the way Jake and them attacked us at La Tech, going back and watching the tempo of Colorado affect us in the game, late in the game, going back and watching watching Coach Walden play Alabama two years ago, watching them play Tennessee a year ago, watching all of their games last season, um, you can see the ways in which they've hurt people. And then veteran players should should set up, you know, lock their jaw to get ready for those things. Out 50 new players, you know, you're gonna have this this week, next week. Like, how do y'all as a staff just feel prepared for that? Uh, we, we watch a bunch of film of a bunch of different people. You know, you're watching, you know, you're, you know, if you, you want to you watch Goodman, you got to watch Austin P. You want to watch Jackson, you got to watch Austin P. Then you got to go back, you know, if, if you want to say the quarterbacks, you got to watch one here, you got to watch one at UTEP. Then you have to go, you know, you got to watch Eastern Kentucky film, and then you have to watch the O linemen. And, and, um, but as much as anything, you know, we, we always try to focus on ourselves, study the other team's players, focus on ourselves, and then say, you know, what do they have? And I think a big piece of it is going to be the tempo. It's going to be the heat. You know, it's going to be 85 degrees. I'm glad we got, you know, the mock game on Saturday it was like 100 and some degrees outside. So that was good for us. And, you know, we, even after we were done, we ran conditioning. So um, I think we're in pretty good shape. After locking it down for the two major scrimmages and wanting your guys, you mentioned, to just – play their game, how are you hoping they translate that to then playing out there in front of 90,000 on Saturday? Yeah, nothing should be different. You know, nothing should be different. No, you should not play differently when there's people watching. You know, if if um, if you play differently, you were doing something wrong to begin with. You know, uh, I'll never forget, and I've told this story before, when I was a young coach 
at uh, when I was a young coach at um, University of Buffalo. We got fired with two games left in the season. I remember my dad saying, How, "However you coach these game, these two games is really who you are as a coach," and those words always made sense to me. Like, if if you start doing something differently because of a certain game, then you weren't doing enough to begin with. And so, um, our guys have worked very hard. They compete against each other. We do a lot of good on good. I'd like them to go out there and spot the ball and compete. You know, just go play. Um, Prepare with tremendous respect for your opponent, but when we go out there, it's about us. And and um, you know, I, I want to see us ride the highs and lows of a game. That's the difference, right? Like, you know, they played Tennessee, and it was six six right before the half. Like, you know, you could feel you know you could feel Tennessee like you know losing their mind a little bit. Like, this is a really good football team, and Scotty's a great coach. Like, they're going to go for them fourth down. They're going to take their shots on us, and if one hits us, we have to regroup and say what's next and keep playing. And um, it, you know, thankfully, these games this past weekend showed a lot of that, right? It's the teams that were resilient that could ride the highs and lows of a game like that That won. Um, that Montana State game, I mean, they're down by 17 and they come back and they win, you know. So um, I think just, again, constantly educating our guys about now that we're in the games, this is what it takes to win. And really, it's just about staying in the moment, playing each snap. That's my hope for them. And uh, we'll see it. But the crowd should do nothing but energize us. Westmoreland, Westmoreland, how do you think he's going to affect your protections and how do you think the tackles are going to handle him? Yeah, Westmoreland's a pro. Um, he's a pro. He's uh, versatile, yeah, you know, great arm over, uh, great ability to affect pass rushers. With, with he, can, he can rattle his pads, shoulder shake, and get tackles off balance. Not afraid to take, you know, the inside move, you know, which is a really – which is a, which is the hallmark of a really um, confident pass rusher. He's got a great motor. And so, and he could also drop into space, you know. So, while he is sort of like a known rusher, you also have to account for, hey, what if he doesn't come? You can't put a back on him. So, um, excellent, excellent football player. You know, one of the better guys we'll see. Um, you know, credit to their coaching staff. He probably could have gone on the portal and played anywhere, but he wanted to stay at UTEP and stay for them. So, really good for us. You know, there's been a lot of questions by you guys, a lot of questions by us about, you know, our tackles and tackle depth and all that stuff. So, they're, they're going to have a great challenge week one. And, um, when it comes to playing a great pass rusher, it's really the job of all 11 guys. You know, like, like you, can't, you can't run that triple release you saw on Instagram versus press. You've got to get open quickly because you're beating the pass rush, right? And the quarterback can't, you know, pass on one because he's getting greedy to go to two. He's got to take a profit when he can. And so we've got to get the ball out of our hand. We've got to pass the ball. We've got to run the ball. We've got to chip. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's an excellent pass rusher. And you go to the other side, you know, Gorey's a really good player as well. So they have two really good edge players. And again, uh, you know, Coach, you know, JJ Clark, they're, they're, like they will, they, they will zero you up. They will come after you. They will blitz you. And so we'll have to handle the pressure and handle the blitz. Um, there's not one part of this coaching staff we're playing against that doesn't come in and try to win. Sometimes you play people and they're just like, hey, you know, like let's play it close to the vest. These guys, they're coming to win. And uh, so it's really, 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 really great, 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 great first test for us to handle someone that's going to throw everything at you. And uh, but a big part of that is Westmoreland and his. Um, his ability to just change the game. Did you guys get off the black shirts? Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Today was like a today was like a walkthrough type day, so Nebraska, I mean, you guys have started on the road or away from home against Big Ten teams the last four years. What's the just the value of starting at home not with a conference game right out of the shoot? Yeah, yeah, well I mean I, for me it's only been one year, right? So I mean, you know, I, but I know that experience from last year. as I said, I thought I failed the team last year when we went to Minnesota preparing for the crowd noise. Um, I didn't think I did a good enough job. And so we certainly, if you've been, or if, you've, if you're in, in the chemistry lab or something, I'm sure you've heard the crowd noise pretty much every day at some point because we're preparing for when that time comes. But um, um, yeah, I'm really excited to be at home, right? And that's why, you know, like even, even, you know, when you're at home and you get off the bus, right, and there's all your family and friends and fans, you know, you do that walk in. It just to, to me, it's, I think it's like a four minute walk. It take four minutes for us. Four minutes and seven seconds, Doctor, because they, they time it for me. Um, but it, to me, it's four minutes and seven seconds of gratitude, right? It's four minutes for me and for our players to recognize that playing at home is, is about way more than just us, right? It's like fan day. I just reminded our guys, like, there might be kids at fan day that, that won't ever get a chance to come to a game, but they get a chance to come to fan day. Like, if you walked around, I don't think you saw any of our guys' phones out, I hope. You didn't see them on their phones. I saw them interacting with So it's the one chance we get on game day to um, – interact with the fans, right, and just re be reminded that, hey, that we're part of something bigger. And there's a reason why we ran that stadium all summer. And there's a reason why they were running those, 
So the reason why the coaches even ran it. I ran it once, and after that I said, hey, guys, this is going to have to be a player-led team because I can't do this. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's a reason why we did that because um, it's bigger than just us. Right? It's bigger than any just one guy. It's about the team. It's about the university. It's about the state. It's about everyone that comes to the game. So I'm excited to be at home. I'm excited to have that lack of crowd noise. But along with that comes the distractions of, like, you know, am I going to play a play and then wave to my mom, or am I just going to play the next play, right? And so – there's a lot of things here that, you know, with an with a older team they'll get. When some of the young guys get in there, we'll have to just keep refocusing them. And that's why I said what I said. I don't, I don't, I'm not, we have to go like this every single game and get better. And that's why we're going to start off playing the way we want to play at the end of the year, at the beginning of the year. And uh, if it doesn't look perfect early on, there's not, we're not going to flinch. We're not going to flinch. We're going to do what we do and just try to get better every year, every game, so that uh, when we end the season, we will have played our best game the last game. NFL cut down day tomorrow. I'm sure that's that was an emotional time for you when you were in the league. But I was curious just about Phelan Sanford, you know, and the play that he had, the plays that he had during preseason. It's not easy to make a special teams uh, on, on your first roster, but just if you paid any attention to the work he was doing and his chances of playing. In the oh yeah, I paid attention to Phelan. I showed the team when he scooped and scored and, and and ran the ball back. I showed the team that right because um, he is the epitome of what we're trying to build, right? He's the epitome. It doesn't matter how you get here. It matters about what you do once you're here. And um, for all of our guys, I'm talking about for the five-star recruits that come into us or the walk-ons, I want their best days to be ahead of them. And um, Phelan's a winner. Um, same guy last year that started the season off with no scholarship and was going to pay his own way until the last day we were able to get him something. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for him. And, and I bet you, even, you know, if, if he makes it, great. And if he doesn't make it, you know, hopefully they'll bring him on the practice squad. One of their coaches, I talked to one of their coaches this year, excuse me, and he just talked about what, you know, what an unbelievable grinder. And um, he's the type of guy that in that league, when you have a guy that you know is going to be healthy, that can do multiple positions and is going to show up on game day, you know, they always have a chance. And so if the team, if our team can see Phelan having success, again, his legacy lives on where they're like, hey, I need to do this, this, and this. So whether it's Omar or Quentin or Phelan, I'll be obviously watching all those guys and, uh, um, we got a bunch of pros on this team, so hopefully they have a great year and help themselves next year. Hey, Coach, last week you called out the backups. They're, the second unit, they're playing like backups. Have you seen them respond to that? Yeah, I think they're. I think some of them understand. Okay, here's what I need to do, and um, you know, really, really, I think I feel like we feel like we're three deep on that D line of guys who can go in. I think there's about nine, nine, maybe ten guys who are prepared, prepared to play. In fairness, I think you know the the there's probably four linebackers and three jacks we'd put in the game right now, maybe five. It's really in the secondary where. We've been challenging some guys, right? Like, I mean, if you're here on scholarship and you're a DB and you're not starting on special teams, you have to really look at yourself and say, why? Like, I'm fast. I'm explosive. And so I've seen some of those guys. I think they've, they've improved this week. You know, we've, we've really challenged them. And, um, you know, our, our season will go based upon our depth. And so we should have good depth. We just have to just keep coaching it. Hey, uh, on coaching assignments, who will be in the, the box for you guys this year? Yeah, we're, we're still kind of working through a little bit of that. Um, and I only say that to say because, you know, the, the, the iPads, as we've done it, every time we do it, you know, we love it. And uh, we do it every day at practice. We have it every day at practice, too. So there's still some stuff remaining to be seen. But Marcus will definitely be in the box. And I think Garrett will probably be with him. You know, uh, uh, Coach Mosey uh, being with Garrett with the wideouts has allowed us to put Coach Mosey down, Jamar down, and, and G up. So I think it'll be like that, and then some of the QCs and analysts, and then I think most of the most of the quote unquote you know, position coaches on defense will be down, and most of the QCs and analysts will be up. So because because um, we have the ability right after the drive now to go look at an iPad. We don't need maybe quite as much experienced guys, at least on defense up top. We want more guys down on the field. And again, versus this tempo offense, managing the substitutions is going to be a big deal. So I think it'll be, you know, Tony will be down, Sad will be up, Ed and Josh will both be down, but mainly analysts on defense. And then Garrett will go up with Sat and probably Aaron Cooling. So is it your film people that cut that up and get it to the iPads? Or how do you get the. It's, uh, it's, it's an independent company on game day, it's an independent company that runs it through DV Sport and so that both sides get it. So there's an independent company that shuts off the he headset mic at 15 seconds or on when the ball snapped. So there's never any gamesmanship. And there's an independent, like we're getting a different feed. So it's not even our cameras. It's a separate camera that's getting us the, um, getting us the video. So in the box, the video is real time. Plays up, play hits, it's wired in. They get that play right away. On the sidelines, it goes to like a, a cart. And then 
when you're over, you go to offense, the offense sits down, they bring over the eight iPads. You have a total of 18 iPads that you can use between up and downstairs, 23 headsets. So, so wish you luck, guys. Look forward to seeing you guys later this week.